everybody, okay, can you truly and actually walk your way to your fat loss goals? My name is Terrell and I am one of the coaches here at Beyond 40. And today we're gonna tackle this question because it is the most trendy way to work out and exercise today. There are apps, there are watches, there are all kinds of things. This guy here tracks my steps. Everything is tracking our steps. There are apps that are going to tell you if you want to lose this many pounds, this is how many steps you have to take a day or how many minutes you have to walk a day. So we have so much walking that is right in front of us, but is it going to do the trick? Well, the answer is simply yes and no. So <laughs> let's dig into the yes first because I love the yeses and yes, 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 we want you to be walking every single day because the benefits of walking go far beyond the fat loss that it can potentially give you. Now, first of all, one of the best ways that it's going to help you with your fat loss is that it burns calories. And yes, you definitely need to be in a calorie deficit for you to be able to burn fat. Now, the best times to go for a walk are after a meal because it's going to help you actually use some of the energy that you brought in in the form of calories because you're going to be using them while you're walking. And so I love after lunch or after dinner because once you get out there and you burn off some of the fuel that you just ate, you have less opportunity to store it. So definitely go for a walk after a meal. But on top of the calorie burning, it also increases your bone and your joint strength, which is so important as we age. I'm 52 years old and this is definitely important to me. I wanna keep my mobility. I wanna keep my quality of life in that way. So having Strong joints and strong bones are a very big deal, but here's a great thing about walking. It's gonna tone your legs. It's gonna tone, especially if you go for a brisk walk and you find those hills, you've gotta find the hills because on the way up the hill, you're gonna tone your glutes, your hamstrings, and your calves. And when you come back down that bad boy, that's where we're gonna work on those quads. And also going for a nice long walk, make it brisk, okay? Like, so I love a casual walk. It's great for your mind, it's great for your brain, it's great for your stress. But for this exercise, we need it to be a brisk walk. It's going to lower your blood pressure. It's going to lower your resting heart rate and your cholesterol. It's also going to help you be less susceptible to type 2 diabetes. And on top of all of that, it is going to raise your aerobic capacity. So kind of the, your activities of daily life are going to improve and be much easier. Going up and down the stairs isn't going to make you huff and puff. But back to the reducing stress, because this is a very big deal, because one thing about it reducing stress and increasing the quality of your sleep is that these two things will help you accidentally um, start to drop fat, because you know what it does? It reduces the amount of fat storing and hunger hormones that your body produces. And this is one reason why when people just begin and exercise and nutrition program, they, and they start walking, they have such big results in the beginning is because they are reducing stress and they are increasing the quality of their sleep. And this falls, falls over into every area of your life and is such a big deal. But now I'm afraid we've got to jump into those no's and here's where it gets a little bit tricky. So no, walking does not build muscle. While it will tone those legs when you hit those hills, you are not going to be able to continue to build muscle because once your body adapts and you're capable of doing those hills up and down, it's very difficult for you to continue to add load to that exercise, which is the key to continuing to increase your muscle mass. And we know, because we've said it a thousand times, that increasing your muscle mass is such a big deal as we age, because just by the process of aging, our muscle mass declines as we age, starting in our late 30s, and moving on and never stop. So unless you're doing something to continually combat that, you're going to lose muscle mass. And our muscle mass is responsible for a majority of our metabolism. So we wanna always keep the most muscle on our frame that we can, and as we age, we have to intentionally do it. So walking does not do this for us. Also, walking does not make you produce the fat burning hormones that resistance training or HIIT workouts do. When you're doing both of those things, you have some fight or flight hormones that automatically get produced and help in your fat loss. And these are not produced when you're walking. And the last reason that walking does not help you as much for fat loss is that when you're done walking, your calorie burning is done. So as soon as you're done with that activity, you go back to a normal heart rate, a normal energy expenditure kind of situation in your body. But when you're doing resistance training or HIIT workouts, there's something called an afterburn. And that will actually make you 
burn more fat and use more calories for hours after your workout. So it is so important that we're adding these things in. So the answer to the walking question is yes, you can reach your goals with walking, but no, it is not going to do everything that you need it to do. So in conclusion, I would like you to remember to please add resistance training into your walking workout. So, I mean, you can do it with you or the best solution is a quick resistance training workout. I don't care if it's just 15 minutes every single day, hit a different body part every single time and then go for a walk because actually that helps you burn off the free fatty acids that your body produced during the resistance training workout. If you just want to do resistance training two days a week, do an upper body workout, a lower body workout, go for a walk after again for those free fatty acid <laughs> removal. Also hit workouts. I love them. Too many of them and too long of a duration of them can be kind of detrimental to your hormonal health. So keep those to a minimum. I like just to do them two days a week. Um, I keep it to probably 40 minutes or less. I love to kickbox. There's my bag. I also love to jump rope. Those are my absolute two favorite hit workouts. So please, please, please add resistance training in a couple days a week, add a hit workout or two in um, each week and walk every single day. And on the days you do the resistance training and the hit program, <laughs> hit program, hit workout, go for a walk afterwards because that is the best way to take care of all those free fatty acids that you have released during those workouts. So I hope this helps you. I hope it inspires you to go for walks every single day and I hope it helps you to bump it up just a little bit um, before you go for that walk. So thank you so much for taking your time with me today and I will see you next time. Bye.